So today we're gonna to give you guys a tour of the lab and talk about some of the things we use the lab for, as well as answer some of the questions we've been getting about body donation. All right, everyone, this is the lab. This is where we hold a lot of our courses, and as you can see, we've got some bodies that we actually store out on the table, and we'll get into a little bit of that in a second, but we also have other smaller structures like organs and uh, muscles and other structures that we keep in the back room and other areas throughout the lab. You can see that the bodies are stored here, and this is where students will actually come in and will uncover the bodies, and they'll learn anatomical structures in a lot of our courses. Now, a lot of students have had a lot of questions and even people on social media about where the bodies come from, how we preserve them, and things of that nature. And so we can get into that and you guys can see uh, bodies are actually in bags and if they've been embalmed, we can actually keep them at room temperature. And so all of our bodies have been embalmed. Now, another term they'll use for embalms is it's fixed. They'll say fixed versus unfixed. A fixed body, again, is an embalmed body. An unfixed body is a body that hasn't been embalmed. And we typically deal with these types of bodies that have been fixed. And one of the things that students also ask us is how do we preserve them during uh, class time? And this bottle right here is full of something called phenoxyethanol. It's actually 99 parts water, one part phenoxyethanol. So the majority of that fluid in there is actually water. People recognize the term ethanol. Um, I used to actually teach barehanded, so students would know that if this got on their skin they weren't going to die or anything like that, so, um, but often most of the time people will use gloves when they're handling the parts in the cadaver lab. Another thing we like to talk about is where the bodies come from. Now all of our bodies come from certified body donor programs and one of the things that's really cool about that is when the person was alive they actually decided to do this. They wanted to donate their body to science and education. And these, in, these bodies in particular have already educated thousands. And now that we've gone onto social media, it's going into the millions. It's amazing. And it's a really cool thing that we're able to educate that many people with the use of these bodies that have been donated. And so that's one thing we're super excited about. And so one of the other things I want to mention is when the person's alive, they also get to decide, do they want to be what's called a common grave body or a return to family body? Now, when people hear that phrase, return to family, they often think, what does that mean? Are they like getting sections or parts back? And no, it doesn't mean anything like that. What happens is we keep track of every single tissue from each uh, body that we have here. I know where all the tissues that belong to this body, all the tissues that belong to that body. Every body tissue that we remove or organ that we remove, we keep separate. And at the end of the time of using that body, we take all the tissues back to whatever body donor program we got the body from and then they cremate the body and if they're a return to family body, those ashes go back to the family. Now some of the people when they're alive, they'll actually say, I, I don't need my ashes to go back to my family and they term those a common plot or a common grave body. And those bodies, we still do the exact same thing. We keep the tissue separate, but instead of the ashes going to the family, they go to a common grave site typically at a city cemetery that's, or just a local cemetery. And those bodies we can keep for upwards of 10 years. For example, the body back there we've had for six or seven years. So that body's already educated a whole bunch of students. And so it's a really cool thing that we're able to do that. And again, we have a lot of respect for the people who donate. Now, one of the other things that uh, we get to do here is, like I said, in-house courses. We mentioned that students will just come through here and actually just take regular course works with courses uh, with bodies that have already been dissected. We've also had students come in and actually do dissection courses. And that, by far, is one of the best ways to learn anatomy, and students usually geek out a lot about that. So hopefully this gave you guys a little bit of information about what we do, how we do it, and keep giving us uh, feedback on our social accounts so we know what you guys are thinking or any other questions that we can address in future videos. Mm -hmm.